Today, I would like to welcome you to the second video in a six part series, which will show you the absolute best way to capture, edit, and then upload game clips to YouTube in the highest possible quality, so they come out looking just like the clips from the professional YouTubers out there that we all enjoy watching so much. We'll be capturing game clips in 1080p, 60 FPS, both with and without chat recording, using a laptop and the Elgato HD60 game capture card. I'll be showing you how to do a fast, high quality edit, and explaining which settings to use to render those game clips out in Sony Vegas, and then covering how to upload those same clips to YouTube using custom thumbnails, tags, descriptions, and the titles that you need for a professional result. In this second video, I'll be showing you how to use the Elgato software, including the best settings and what capturing techniques will get you the best result. Straight up, if you watch the series from start to finish, you're going to know everything you need to about game capturing, editing, and uploading with various setups to get some legit results. So stay locked, ask any questions or requests tutorials in the comments below crush that like button and yeah i hope this helps what is currently happening youtube facepalm here your friend in oz and nz bringing you reviews tutorials and game clips minus the shit. you can follow me on twitter at facepalm with a one not an l as for here on youtube if you like what you find then like comment and subscribe don't forget to bring your game face let's get it done so in the first video I ran through the lineup of every video in this series. Instead of going through that again, you can just click one of the links on screen now to take you to the other videos should you need them. I do recommend though that you watch these videos in order to get the most out of them as the setups in the later videos rely on the setups in the videos that came before them. So aside from that, let's get straight into part two, the Elgato HD60 software best settings and techniques for high quality game capture clips. So after the first video, all your hardware should be set up and connected. Now let's sort out the Elgato Game Capture HD60 recording software. So turn on your laptop first, this will give the HD60 the power it needs to run. Turn on your console, then start up the Elgato Game Capture HD60 recording software. So the first thing you will see is this window with a preview of the game you're playing. You'll see a red record button down the bottom as well as the flashback recording slider. A screenshot button will be here and some other little icons. Then over on the right you'll see a couple of menus and I'll explain all these in a moment. First let's configure our settings properly to make sure the clips we are going to record are the best quality we can get them. So the way the Elgato software works is it records your game clips in a .m2ts format. Then when you export those clips from the Elgato software, it converts them into an mp4 file, which is what we will use to drop into our editing software, like Sony Vegas, for editing. If you keep that in mind, this tutorial will make a lot more sense. So. Keeping that in mind, click on this little Game Capture HD Preferences cog looking button at the top here. Uh, this will open up the Global Software Preferences menu, uh, which should land us on the Capture tab by default. In this tab, you can select where you want your clips and screenshots to be captured to. The default video's location is fine, but you can select an external hard drive location if you want to save space on your laptop's hard drive. Below that is a box that says Enable Flashback Recording. This is one of the Elgato standout features which lets you game away your days, and when you hit that sick clip, you can essentially jump back in time and just capture that clip so no hard drive space is wasted. And at the end of the day, all you have is a bunch of awesome clips ready to edit. The Enable Stream command box activates the extra features you need for streaming online to services like Twitch, for example. Uh, this also allows us to record a webcam, uh, but we'll be doing that in the fourth video, so for now, leave it unticked as it will chew up CPU resources in the background. Over in the sharing tab, the boxes you tick here show up in the share section back in the main capture window. And they let you share your captured game clips directly to social media like YouTube or Twitter. For me though, I like MP4 clips that I can take and put in my editing software to clean up, edit, add music, and then upload to social media. You can do whatever you want, but for now the only box I have ticked is the MP4 box. I'll leave the always convert new videos to MP4 files box unticked as I don't want the software converting clips without me telling it to as this will chew up CPU in the background. The only other boxes I have ticked here are the live commentary audio and webcam under export to separate files. Having these boxes ticked will tell the Elgato software to save your live commentary audio, which is your voice, and your webcam separately from your game clips. I have these boxes ticked because when I'm editing later on, I like to keep the audio, video, and webcam stream separate so I can change their volumes and sizing independently. If 
if you choose to mix the following tracks to export, uh, then everything will be combined as is and you won't be able to change the volume of your voice or the position of the webcam when we come to editing. Keep them separate and you'll get extra flexibility to make your videos more balanced and professional. Uh, you can tick or untick the boxes on the updates tab depending on your sway. I leave them unticked as my Surface Pro 4 is not connected to the internet while recording. Just make sure you check in on the Elgato website every so often to see if there is a software update and download and install it manually in your own time. Uh, you can set hotkeys which lets you assign a single key on your keyboard to a single function in the software. For example, you could have the R key assigned to start recording. I don't use these as if I have a wireless mouse which sits beside me that I use to start and stop recording instead. Leave the advanced tab as is and hit OK. Once you're back out in the main window, you'll see two tabs at the top here, the Capture tab and the Edit tab. We'll focus on the Capture tab for now as we need to capture some clips before we can edit them. So in the section where it lists what device you are currently gaming on, click on the Show Device Settings cog to open the Device Settings menu. For older versions of the Elgato software, this will be a little hammer and crescent looking button, but if you're seeing that, go to the Elgato website and download the latest version of the software. On the Capture tab, choose your input device. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm using a PS4, so I'll choose that. There are also other options here to choose. And if you're recording a gaming PC, then choose the other option. In this drop-down menu, you can see two options, an analog audio option for when you are plugging an audio cable into the HD60 and an HDMI option. The analog option is always going to give you a less than professional sound, and as we are connecting our PS4 to the HD60 via an HDMI cable, leave the audio input as HDMI audio. Uh, leave the color range as standard. In the profile drop-down box, choose HD1080 and click the Allow 60 FPS box uh, if you want to record at 60 frames per second. If you want to record in a lower quality then you can, but if you bought the HD60 you should be using it for full 1080p recording and ideally at 60fps, especially for games that play in 60fps like Call of Duty. A quick side note here, uh, the Elgato HD60 doesn't actually record at 60 frames per second, it records at double NTSC which is technically 59.94 frames per second. Uh, this is actually preferable when editing and at the end of the day, semantics. Then set the quality slider to best. Uh, this tells the Elgato software to record at 40 megabytes per second, which will take up 18.1 gigabytes per hour of space on your laptop's hard drive. Now, there are various videos on YouTube that suggest you should use a lower setting here for lower power laptops or to save storage space. But I always use the highest quality best setting on my Surface Pro 3 i5 model with the four gig of RAM. Uh, and you can click the link on the screen now and it will take you to a video of that in action. Um, and and in all honesty, if my Surface Pro 3 can handle it, it is likely your laptop or PC, even if it is a bit older, will be fine. Currently, I use the Surface Pro 4, which as far as PCs go, is still not super powerful, but it works really well with the Elgato system for capturing game clips at the max settings. Uh, if you're concerned about the storage space that recording at the best setting will take up, then bear in mind for games like Call of Duty and the like, you're only going to be recording a whole lot of 10 to 30 second clips. Uh, so it would take 120 of those 30 second clips to make up an hour of recording and still an hour of recording man it's only 18 gig if storage on your pc or laptop's hard drive is an issue then get an external hard drive to move your clips to for storage after you have captured them uh, if you do lower that slider you start to lose quality especially in games when, where there is a lot of movement like call of duty uh, if however after all that your laptop is struggling to capture or your internet is so slow um, you're struggling to upload high quality video to youtube for 10 1080p. Um, for 1080p videos, anything over 20 megabytes per second on the slider is going to get you a decent result uh, that's going to be pretty close to what we want anyway. So if you have to lower that slider, it's not the end of the world. But really, hard drives are cheap, cheap laptops are powerful, and so for me, the best way is to have that quality slider in the Elgato software set to best and go from there. Moving on, leave the two boxes at the bottom unticked. Leave all the other settings on all the other tabs set to default and back out into the main window 
window, you'll see the live streaming tab. Uh, this will be available if we had the enable stream command box ticked in the global HD preferences menu. We'll use this setting in the next videos when we move on to recording our own voice and webcam. But for now, you can see down the bottom, uh, here is a green stream button which starts and stops webcam and stream recording. Uh, under this section, you'll see game audio. I like to set my game audio to minus two as this creates a bit of headroom if things get out of control. And you can always bump this volume back up once you're at the editing stage. Uh, you'll see the live commentary section, which we'll also come back to in the next video as this is where we record our voice chat. Uh, but for now, you can see the blue commentary button down the bottom here, which starts and stops our voice recording. At this stage, make sure the commentary button is not lit up as we don't need it chewing up CPU resources in the background. Uh, in the tag sections here, name and shame your video and that covers the settings menu. So if we have a look at this preview men uh, window, you'll notice that the video signal that is displayed here on your laptop is delayed by a second or two compared to what is displaying on the TV or monitor you are using to play your game. This is because it takes a moment for the signal to go through your computer's operating system, i.e. Windows, and into the Elgato software to be recorded. And this is why we can't just use the laptop screen to play the game. So in saying that, one thing I like to do is disable the sound playback button in the Elgato software, as this will stop the delayed sound from coming out of your laptop at the same time as the not delayed sound from your TV. Don't worry, the game clip's sound will still be recorded as normal. Uh, if you're using headphones, it's probably not much of an, as much of an issue as they'll block out the external sound anyways. Uh, and just above that little speaker icon, you'll see the preview window button, uh, which toggles the preview window on and off. A quick tip here is if you're using a laptop that is struggling a bit, uh, you can disable the preview window here while gaming, and then turn it back on when you want to use the slider to capture a clip. Um, this would reduce the strain on the GPU, and I have seen that this does actually make a noticeable difference, especially on a roasting hot day when my Surface Pro 4 is struggling to keep up with a 12-hour capturing compression session. Uh, also, if you start to get artifacts or glitches while capturing, restarting the Elgato software and even your laptop can help get things back on track. There's also a screenshot button over here which you can use to capture a screenshot of whatever is showing in the preview window, and this will be saved to whatever location you had set in the global HD preferences menu. So now that the hardware is all set up and the software is all set up, it's as easy as capturing a game clip. So let's do that now. So in the case of something like Call of Duty, for example, we're going to be playing the game as you do and capturing a whole lot of sick little clips we can save to edit later. How do we do that? Well, see the slider on the bottom of the screen? If you have enable flashback recording checked under the capture tab in the global preferences menu, then the Elgato software is always recording a M2TS clip in the background. And you can see that by the counter here, which tells us how long our background recording is so far, as well as telling us how much space is left on our laptop's hard drive. Then once you hit a clip you like, you can drag the slider back to a point in time before that clip happened. Then come over and hit the red record button once to tell the software to capture from this point onwards, then hit the red record button a second time to complete the capture. This will now move that captured M2TS clip over to the edit tab. If you drag the slider back and decide you don't want to capture that clip, you can hit this little live button here and the slider will jump back to the far right and you'll be previewing live video again. Also, the play, rewind and fast forward buttons here do what you think they do. Um, so once you have captured captured your short clip, uh, you can go on over to the edit tab and you will see the M2TS clip we just captured in the list here on the right. Uh, there's also a timeline here at the bottom which lets you chop up the clips in the list and remove the extra bits at the start and ends that you don't want. This is really handy because it will save you lots of disk space. So click along this timeline to a point you want your clip to start and pause it there. Then click this little scissor icon uh, which will split the clip, then select the portion of the clip you don't want. That portion will then highlight in blue and you can click the little trash can delete icon over here uh, to remove that section of unwanted video. Do the same for the end or use the same technique to chop a section out of the middle if you like. If you need to zoom in or out on this timeline then use these little plus and minus icons and you'll see a speaker icon here which toggles our sound on and off. Uh, you'll see a counter which tells us the length of our clip, another screenshot button and the usual jump to start, rewind, play, fast forward icon that you would expect to see.
see. While you are trimming your clip in the timeline, you'll notice that the time indicator on the clip in the list over here on the right will also update with the new length of our clip in the timeline. So once you are happy with the length of the clip, come on over and hit this File MP4 button. Once you hit that button, the Elgato software will convert this M2TS file into a new trimmed MP4 file. A folder will then pop up and it will contain the trimmed MP4 clip you just created. Uh, this will be ready to drop into your editing software. If you need to find this folder later and it's not in the default videos location, then it will be in the custom location you set under the capture tab in the game capture HD preferences menu. So once you're in this folder, as well as the MP4 game clip you just created, you'll also see a folder named EGC underscore library. Inside this folder are the folders that contain the M2TS files that you have been capturing with the Elgato software. And they will have the same name as the tags you set in the capture window. And also a date stamp so you know uh, when and where they were recorded. Uh, also, if you're using the flashback recording feature, which we are at the moment, you'll see a folder called Time Shift. So this Time Shift folder contains the temporary background recording of the game you are playing. And once you use the slider back in the Elgato software to set the length of the M2TS file we want to capture and then hit the red record button, the M2TS file in this time shift folder will be trimmed to the length we set with our slider and dumped into one of these folders and then a new time shift folder will appear. So if we go back out to the videos folder, we've got the trimmed MP4 clip that we saved, uh, but we've also still got the untrimmed M2TS version of that MP4 file in the EGC underscore library folder. And as we are going to be keeping the MP4 clips to edit later on, we're not going to need the M2TS folders anymore, and they'll be taking up unnecessary space on our hard drive. So how do we safely remove these M2TS files to clear up space on our hard drive? Well, you can just delete them uh, here if if you're confident that all your MP4 files are safe and sound in the videos folder. Uh, however, the safer way to do this is go back to the edit tab in the Elgato software and look at the clips list. Remembering that these are our M2TS files. Uh, any M2TS clip which has been successfully saved as an MP4 file in our videos folder will now have this little pro icon under it. Uh, and you can use the trash can icon down here to remove the M2TS clips from this list. Uh, and this will also delete that same m to TS file back out in the EGC underscore library folder while keeping our MP4 file safe and sound so we can use it for editing later on in Sony Vegas. Uh, this frees up the space on our hard drive and keeps things nice and clean. Pretty tight, huh? Um, be warned though, only delete these files from this list once you have saved all your clips to an MP4 file and they appear here in the videos folder. So what I like to do when playing uh, Call of Duty is when I hit a game clip, I'll wait until I die, then when I respawn, I'll quickly jump over to the Elgato software and capture that clip. I'll keep doing this for all the clips I hit under the, until the end of the round, then once the round is finished and I'm waiting in the lobby uh, for the next round to start, I'll jump into the Elgato software and trim the start and ends of the clips and bounce them out to mp4s. I'll then name them as I go so I don't get overwhelmed by a whole lot of sequentially named clips at the end of the day. Uh, then I'll just keep on gaming. So now you should fully understand how the Elgato software works and which settings to use to capture the highest possible quality game clips. In the next video I'm going to show you how to record your voice with your game clips and a link will pop up in a second to take you directly to that video. So on that note, don't forget to smash the like button and comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Thanks for watching today's video, just remember you can follow me on Twitter at BassPalm with a 1 not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find then like, comment and subscribe but don't forget to bring your game face. Face palm out.